I can usually solve my own issues with my PC, but I'm stumped and it's a code that's vague and doesn't really give any real hints to what it could be. The motherboard code is 00, which on the ASUS website says a random CPU error daring post. I usually leave my PC on while at work, no different today, except I came home with a 00 code on the motherboard. So I restarted the PC and it posted and went into the BIOS. I looked around at a few settings and while I was looking at the settings for XMP, the PC shut down and the code 00 popped back up. Since then, it hasn't posted at all, same code, zero, zero, just a black screen. This here is that viewer's broken gaming PC, and in this video, we're gonna try to fix it. Now, you might be wondering why I'm in my garage and not in my office, which is actually directly above us, and the reason for that is simple. This rig smells like smoke, and I just don't want that in my house. It's a personal choice. The second thing I'd like to point out is that uh, we're about to be hit by a hurricane, literally like mid-shot. It's, uh, it's already looking pretty rough out there. Uh, yeah, this is uh, not looking good. It's gonna be a bit of a loud one, I apologize. It's just mother nature at work and we have to play with the hand we're dealt. Now it sounds like we're dealing with a CPU issue here. Anytime we see debug code 00, that either means the CPU is dead, like completely just bricked, or maybe there's an issue with the socket, something along those lines. Hopefully we can get to the bottom of it by the end of this video. Are you ready? Now that praying mantis up there is ready. Stay with me. If you're planning your next PC build, then consider checking out our sponsor, VIP SCD Key. Their Windows 10 and 11 OEM keys sell for a fraction of retail and will unlock the full potential of your OS. They'll also remove those pesky activation watermarks. Click the links below to get started today and be sure to use our special offer code SKGS for a sweet discount on a variety of options, including Windows 10 and 11, Pro and Home, and more. Whew. Hi there, my name's Greg and welcome to Fix or Flop Garage Edition this time around. Now, for those who don't know, in this playlist we attempt to fix viewer systems for free in and around the Orlando, Florida area. We don't charge anything to perform the services that we perform and of course we don't charge for replacement parts either. We have a lot of great relationships with brands who are willing to help us out and it's all thanks to your viewership. So thank you very much for that. All right, we're gonna power on the system, jump straight into it. I wanna see if we can even get this thing to power on. It sounds like it should but I don't think we're gonna get a picture out. I also wanna see if we can replicate that debug code. Where's the power button on this thing? Oh, it's way up here. Okay, All right, so power on. Looks pretty good so far, but I'm not seeing any reaction on our portable monitor. And would you look at that, debug code zero, zero. This is not a good sign. This motherboard does have a dedicated clear CMOS button. I'm gonna hold that down with the power of the system off in an attempt to clear it. It's unlikely this will fix anything. I'll also jump the pins on the board just to be safe. Let's try powering on now. Uh, you can see it just goes straight to double zero. It knows that something is wrong immediately and the CPU is one of the first hardware checks during a post process. So I'm gonna hone my attention in on this cooler, on the socket, and on the chip itself, I think we have an issue with one of these three things. By the way, I should have mentioned this earlier, I have the system specs here. It's an Intel Core i7-12700K paired with an ASUS Tough RTX 4070 Ti, uh, a Tough Z690 motherboard, 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance 6000 megahertz DDR5, and an ARM 1000 watt PSU, also from Corsair. Intel has had it pretty rough as of late with its 13th gen and 14th gen higher end CPUs. I'm not sure if 12th gen is affected to the same extent. I'm using a 12900K, my own personal editing rig, no issues there. But of course, that's just one sample in an entire pool of CPUs. I just wanted to preface what we're about to see with that bit of news in case you've been living under a rock or don't follow current tech events. Intel's having a rough time. I'm gonna go ahead and lay this case down to give us more access to the CPU cooler. It'll also make it easier to remove. Go ahead and get this center fan out of here. And now we can remove these two top screws holding down the cooler. Now I don't think we're dealing with a problematic socket. It doesn't sound like the viewer was tampering with the cooler or anything. This cooler, by the way, is upside down. So we're gonna, we're gonna flip it right side up for him. We reinstall this. Uh, but I don't really have any reason to believe that the socket is damaged. We're gonna check just to make sure, but I'm leaning more on the side of just Bork CPU. So let's pull this off. You can see this is indeed a Core i7-12700K. The back side of the chip looks pretty good. No thermal paste bleeding over the edges. All the pads are exposed. And sure enough, the socket looks really good as well. No bent or missing pins. So then what should our next course of action be? I can tell you that I've already verified both of his eight pin EPS cables powering a CPU are connected properly, both on the motherboard side and the power supply side. His 24 pin looks good. I don't think we have anything graphics card related related going wrong here just because of the debug code that we're seeing. It flashes double zero right away. The, the quickest thing we can do is swap the CPU out. I don't 
think that anything else in this rig has the ability at this point to kill whatever CPU I put in there. I think this is just a, an isolated CPU issue. So I'm gonna do that because I've already got the socket exposed. The next thing we'll do after that is verify that the power supply is sending the correct amount of power to uh, its peripherals. And then the last resort is gonna be to swap the motherboard. I don't think the motherboard's to blame here, but I've seen weirder stuff in this playlist before. Thankfully, I have an exact replacement to his chip just sitting in my closet here. This thing has been collecting dust. I'll happily donate it to this person's rig if that means we can get it back up and running. This would honestly be one of the easiest fixes. I'm kind of hoping that this is what it takes. So let's very gently set it in the socket like so. So, and I'm actually gonna try powering the system on as is. I'm not gonna install the cooler yet. The system won't be on long enough for temperatures to matter. I just wanna see if we can get a post. Let's try powering on, here we go. All right, the fans turn on. We do have a double zero debug code again. Wow, that, that was almost immediate. This CPU is stone cold. It's not getting any power at all. This is gonna take a bit more time than I was expecting. So if we assume then that his chip is fine, since my known working chip also exhibits the same symptom, let's try power supply testing. I'm wondering if the CPU is even getting enough power. And sure enough, nothing wrong here. Everything's a pass, everything's a go. So there's no reason to look any further into this. I shouldn't have said power earlier. I really meant voltage. You can see we are receiving a steady 12 volts or so to the CPU. So a dead motherboard? That's about the only other big component here that should be in question. I'm gonna remove the graphics card and quickly test off camera to make sure that that's not creating any issues. But if the rig was just sitting still and then all of a sudden started showing that double zero debug code, he wasn't updating his BIOS, he wasn't doing anything crazy. We already cleared the CMOS. That's about as much as we can do with conventional hardware here anyway. Uh, I, I don't know what else to do other than swap the board out. Would you look at that? I actually do have a Z690 motherboard. It's an RG Maximus Hero. So this thing is actually better than what he currently has. If we put his CPU in here and we get it to work, then we might just end up swapping motherboards out. At this point, what it's looking like, I'm just hoping that his CPU is also not dead. Two dead components is no good. This is a very haphazard setup. I actually have an AMD cooler on top of this Intel chip. It's not fastened down or anything. We're not gonna leave the system on long enough for that to matter. I just wanted some airflow. We're gonna try jumping the pins here. All right, so it powers up. I'm gonna give this some pressure just uh, just so that it can sort of kind of work, keep that chip cool. I'm not sure how long it's gonna to take to post, if it posts, and we are running off of integrated graphics, so that's why we don't have a discrete card here. Fan curve kicked in. That's a really good sign. We should see something. Yes, there it is. All right, that's literally all we need to see. I'm gonna kill power and I can relay the good news to the owner. I know I said I would have preferred it if the CPU was the problem just because it would have been easier to swap. But at this point, I'm just happy that it's not both components that are dead. So back in the garage then, it's time to essentially gut this entire system. We'll get that motherboard out of there. I'm not worried about testing the graphics card or the RAM separately for now, just because they're very easy to remove and test later. I don't suspect though that they're gonna have any issues, just based on what we've already seen. Kick things off by removing this graphics card. Bit of a beefcake. The new motherboard is going in nice and gently. Make sure all these cables are moved out of the way. And we'll have to get the cooler reattached as well, which will require moving over the mounting gear. Now transferring memory. These are both DDR5 boards, so that makes it pretty straightforward. I've gotten almost everything wired up. Ah, I think this here is why we weren't getting LEDs for those Corsair fans. This, uh, this little SATA power cable here was disconnected and this runs to a Lee and Lee RGB box. So I'll have to tell him to uh, maybe add another set of SATA power cables for his power supply. He doesn't have the extra kit in here and I don't have this power supply on hand to throw one in myself. Not the end of the world again, I'll just make sure it's something he knows about. I wanna see if this thing powers on firstly without a graphics card installed. I don't wanna waste time installing the cooler either if we do have some other issue. I think though that this is, I think this is gonna work. So first up power there. Again, I'm not gonna leave it on too long. This chip is, uh, doesn't have a cooler on it, so we can only leave it on for a few seconds. So I just wanna see if we get a splash page, should we get a post? Did we get something? A few moments later. Oh, come on. Look at that, boom. Alrighty, it's being shut off. Let's get the cooler installed. That was it, folks. It just came down to a bad motherboard. For some reason, 
And that board is not very old either. I wonder if maybe we have like a faulty CMOS battery. It'd be pretty silly of me to replace an entire board over a CMOS battery. I didn't think to check that. In hindsight, I should have, but uh, we'll give that a once over. We'll strip down the board just to bare PCB, see if we see anything blown, anything overheated, cooked. But uh, otherwise, it's looking like just a straightforward motherboard swap. Gonna take care of this graphics card. And down goes the cooler, right side up this time around. Not a huge deal performance wise, just, uh, well, want we'll the text right side up if we can. All right, and that should just about do it. I think we're ready to power on officially for the last time. We can be done with this portion of the video and move on to that motherboard, see if there's anything obvious that uh, we could maybe address there. This is for all the marbles. I hope this works. That was a lot of, a lot of work getting this thing back together. All right, so it looks like uh, things turn on. Okay, got all the fans spinning. We do have several Dr. Debug codes being displayed, which is always a good sign. It's better than where we started. We were just getting zero, zero right off the bat. And I am at this point expecting a post, although it would probably help to connect the HDMI cable to the graphics card. Let's try that again. Also important in this case here, since we started the system with it connected where it shouldn't have been, to restart the rig, uh, because it's gonna be confused now where to default the uh, display out. So when you've started the system up for the second time with it already connected to the graphics card, this is where it's gonna notice in the source, and, uh, and that's how you get picture out. So just don't want anyone to be confused if, uh, if you turn a rig on and it's not connected anywhere, and then after the fact, you connect it, and you're like, hmm, I'm not getting a signal it's because the system didn't know where to send the signal to begin with when it first powered on. And look at that, that there is uh, a post. It looks like it's thinking we have a new CPU installed. It's actually a new motherboard, not a huge deal, but it does look like at first glance, everything else is detected, including his storage drives. It's so strange to me, the symptoms we were seeing, I would have thought we'd either have a dead CPU or a defective socket. Like those are the two big things on my radar. And it turns out both of those are actually totally fine. There's a couple things I wanna check. We're gonna strip down the entire board down to bare PCB just to see if we see any burn marks or anything. But before that, I wanna check the voltage in the CMOS battery, see if it's pumping out three volts. And if it isn't, that that could very well be why we're seeing what we're seeing, and I will look like a fool for not checking that any sooner. I don't think it's to blame, though, because this board is so new. In fact, that's why I didn't really have it on my radar. This board's only like a year or two old tops. What do we have here? Let's see, a steady three volts. Yep, so battery's fine. I've unbuttoned everything from behind, so we should just be able to pull up and expose more of the board here. This is the retention mechanism that's tied to the uh, slot. A uh, little lock here for the uppermost 16 lanes. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, we've got this bigger piece further up, which not in, not entirely sure how this is. Oh, there we go. Okay, it just pulls up like so. You got one cable here for the LEDs. Yeah, this thing looks pretty minty. Let's check the backside quickly here. Also looks pretty clean. <sighs> well. There's only one thing left to do. We're gonna YOLO it. I'm just gonna try powering this thing on with known working hardware. I've got my uh, Core i7 12700K in here. I've got uh, known working DDR5 dim and a known working power supply. This is as far as I can really go. I mean, we could have a corrupt BIOS. Uh, the, the tooling for that to, to check and to, to reflash if you have a bad flash or something like that, uh, it's, it's, it's a little complicated. I'm still working on it. I'll keep this board in the event that I uh, decide to take that on. I actually purchased the kit in order to, to, to do that with these boards here. But I don't think that was the problem. At least that wasn't disclosed to me by the owner. Uh, we'll see. I'll follow up with him in a second and see if uh, he did attempt a, a BIOS flash. But it doesn't sound like it. All right, so we are powered up now. Yeah, the same thing, zero, zero. Chip doesn't get hot. The debug code stays frozen at double zero. And of course we get no picture out through integrated graphics. As of now, this board is just one big paperweight. I don't even need my FLIR imaging camera for this one. Like this chip is ice cold. <laughs> There's no power at all running through this thing. A bit disappointing then that we couldn't diagnose this any further, but the light at the end of the tunnel is that the system is currently working as is with the replacement board in there. I thankfully had almost an exact match uh, on hand that I had just completely forgotten about. I'm happy to donate that to the owner because it just sits and collects dust in my closet otherwise. So uh, the rig is 
up and running. That's the most important thing. And uh, we've even taken some time to clean up cable management just a tad, especially on the left side here, uh, to make sure that uh, we don't have any extra exposed cables just to reduce clutter for the sake of aesthetics. His rig's actually specced very nicely. It's very balanced and it's still modern. So it, it's a shame that something as silly as this had to go wrong just randomly, like on a random Tuesday, brick motherboard. What happened? Like, did it try to auto update the BIOS by itself? Like, did it overvolt or something? I, I don't see again any burn marks, so we could just start probing random places. But at the end of the day, a board this new should not be dying this soon. I'll be sure to reach out to ASUS to see if I can get a replacement myself just to have an extra on hand in case something like this happens again. I would say this is fairly isolated, not something to freak out about. It's not a, you know, a systemic issue with the brand or with these models. It, it's, stuff happens. Tech can be finicky at times. It unfortunately happened to this owner here. But again, we were able to get them back up and running and it didn't take a ton of effort. That then just about wraps this one up. Thank you all so much for watching. Your support is so very much appreciated. The reason why we're able to do this for free for viewers in the Orlando, Florida area is because of your viewership. So we'd like to continue that. If you guys appreciated this video, if you learned a thing or two, maybe give this one a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Leave comments down below. And uh, while we're at it, go ahead and check out that link down below in the description that'll bring you to our form if you have a broken system and you'd like a chance to have it fixed on the channel for free. That's all for this one. Thank you again for watching and thanks for learning with me.